Welcome back to the Vaughn Cast. I'm Vaughn Miller. I'm here in Las Vegas, and I got Mr. Vegas with me today, my guy. Um, one, of, one of my, my best colleagues in, in the league, man. I've been following his career, man. We got a, a very uh, special relationship, and it's super cool to have him on my show. Um, Two-time Pro Bowl defensive end. Um, really way, way more than that. Got my guy Max Crosby here, man. Appreciate you, my G. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate you, bro. Always. Thanks for having me on, bro. Um, let me take a moment to show my guy Max some love, man. 37 and a half career sacks. The most defensive snaps of all linemen since 2019. That's 3,665 snaps. And I think that is that is really one of the most impressive stats that you have. Because we all know, like, how you play this game. You play it full speed. You know, you can do the spin. You can, you can, you can bull rush. You can long arm. You can do all, everything under the sun when it comes to pass rush. But your effort on the football field, and you do that every single play and not miss a game, how do you do it? Uh, honestly, man, I appreciate it. it. It really comes down to preparation and mindset because – um, you know, it really starts in the off season. I start in January and we finished, you know, in January. So um, it's nonstop for me. Uh, I give everything I have into my nutrition, my recovery. Um, literally every single box I make sure it's checked and some. So, yeah, when I go out on the field, I'm not thinking about, you know, if I'm in good enough shape to keep going. Uh, so I want to show the coaches, like, my, my thing when I came in, they were like, yeah, he's a pass rusher. He's going to come in be a third down guy. And I was like, no, like, I'm an every down guy and I wanted to prove that every day. So yeah, every time I go out there, I don't want to come out the field. And, uh, yeah, I've been, you know, blessed enough to stay healthy and just keep keep rolling. Well, for sure, you, you are definitely a, a red dot guy when you cut on, the, cut on the film. And when I say red dot guys, I mean, when you watch the film, like, no matter if he's making a play or not, you have to put the red dot on him. And I know it was a big play that uh, I, I probably – probably your um, most successful – QB pressure wasn't even on the quarterback. It was on Myers at the end of the game. He's running down the field 30 yards, putting pressure on the receiver. I don't know why the receiver threw the ball back, but we, we'll, get into, we'll, get, we'll get into that later. <laughs> we'll get into that later, but this guy, yeah. man, he plays, he plays with his hair on fire, man, and to not miss a snap in um, four whole years is crazy, man. Um, Chandler Jones has publicly said that you are the reason why he came to the Raiders. Um, I, you know, if I had the opportunity, I would love to go to the Raiders too, man, and play with Max Crosby. But you also have another guy there too, Tyreek Wilson. What makes you guys the best trio or the best duo in the league? Yeah, you know, there's a, there's a lot of football that's got to be played, you know, for us to establish ourselves as, you know, the best duos. You know, obviously there's a ton of them. You know, obviously Micah, D-Law, you and Greg, um, Chris and Frank and KC. Um, obviously Frank's in Denver now, but... Um, you know what I they think? Got, they got Brandon Browning and Randy Gregory yeah. there too. They got a trio. Over yeah, there they too. got some guys. Randy's one of my one of my closest dudes. He's a baller. Um, but honestly, I I really think um, we got a lot of work to do. Um, I feel like the first year there was a lot of growing pains, ups and downs. But um, Chandler Jones is you know him saying you know I came to play with you know Max Crosby is the biggest honor. Like I, I was in college talking in interviews and I would show him like, this is from 2017. I'm like, Chandler Jones, one of my favorite guys, one of the most <laughs> unorthodox rushers. And now we're teammates and he's, you know, bragging about me, which is honestly surreal. So yeah, you know, Chandler's, you know, had an incredible off season. I'm, I'm excited to have him, you know, take another huge step this year. And uh, Tyree's coming in, uh, getting healthy. And, you know, we, you know, I haven't seen him play yet, um, but from everything I've heard and everything I've seen, you know, as far as, as tape, you know, he's, he's a special player. So we're excited to get them rolling man it's, it's it's crazy like you said they got uh you know crazy duos and and uh and trios around the league you know denver they have frank clark uh randy gregory brandon browning um you got khalil mack and joey bosa with the chargers you know miami you got bradley chubb and, and Jalen, and you know they stacked over there too they got malik they got malik uh they got my guy malik over there as well yeah um yeah. but some of the best duos in sports Let's talk about it. I, we got to start. I think since we're in the NFL, we, we got to start with – we got to start with – we're probably Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. I was going to say the same thing. Um, they got to be number one right now. They, they got to be number one, man. I think, yeah. you know, the Splash Bros yep. are a great duo as well. Steph and Clay for sure. You got any other duos? There's a lot. You know, I'm, I'm a little biased. You know, I've been uh, – you know, ever since Harden went to Houston, I was uh, – 
you know, I've been a Harden fan, so mm -hmm. him and Joel are, are a pretty good duo, but, they, you know, they haven't haven't been able to come through, you know, in the playoffs, but, you know, they're another dynamic duo for sure. There's a lot of them out there. You got the Joker. You got, you got the Joker, Joker Jamal and Jamal. Mary. That's yeah. dangerous. Um, got I, get, I can show some love to my guys. We got Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs. Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs. There's, I think, Low key, the sleeper one is Herbert and uh, Keenan Allen. Real, you know, they've real. been chopping up for the last three, four years. So Make sure they they'll both be healthy and they'll be ready to go, man. You got Stafford and Cooper Cup as well. Stafford and Cup, yeah, they got a bowl together. Obviously, you know that. <laughs> um, there's there's a lot of them. I think honestly, and I'm not even trying to say the most scary duo. And I, I remember the day when uh, you got traded to the Rams, and when I'd seen Von Miller, Aaron Donald. I'm like, this is not even fair. Right. I, and y'all did exactly what y'all were supposed to do, bro. And that, that last drive in the Super Bowl was insane. That's crazy. Y'all were that's, chopping up, bro. Dope, I watched man. that that's film dope. to this day. I swear to God. That's dope, man. That, that last drive was crazy, man. But that's, that's crazy you say that, man, because we was looking up, like, you know, all of these things, like all of these duos before the show even started. And for you to bring it up, man, like me and Aaron Donald, bro, that is dope, man. My oh, God, man. Come on. That's, man, that's you, uh, bro. You dope, two man. Hall of Famers right there. You can't. Can't get any better. Right. Man, we was here in, we, we're here in Vegas. Um, Aaron Donald has came out here for my Pass Rush Summit. And that's why I'm here this weekend. This is my seventh annual Pass Rush Summit. Um, I started this uh, Pass Rush Summit back in, I don't know, what, 2000 and, what, I started seven years ago. <laughs> I started seven years ago. <laughs> um, Vic Beasley, um, I had a position coach that was my position coach for the Denver Broncos. He left and he was, Vic Beasley's defensive coordinator, and he was telling me, like, man, you got to work out with this guy, work out with this guy. And I finally got on the page with, with Vic, and I told him to come out to San Francisco. I was like, come out to San Francisco, man. We can work out. I, I show you how I train. We can go over some film and, and do some D-line work. And Vic had told the reporters um, there in Atlanta, and I was just searching my name one day, and it was like, Von Miller's having his pastor summit in California. And I'm like, no, I'm not, but... <laughs> I, I might as well, like, ride on this. Like, he, he, he's inviting all the passwords out. This is what they're going to do. And, you know, I started it then. And um, it, it was really, honestly, when I started it, I just, I just really wanted to be around all the best guys in the league. And I, I wanted to continue to grow. And I wanted others to have an environment to continue to grow as well. And I, I talked to some of the guys that I respected around the league, like J.J. Wide and Justin Houston. And I called all these guys and Khalil Mack. And everybody said they was on board. And, and we did it. And it was it was a success. And um, when you see the Von Miller Password Summit, it, it immediately screams like a Von Miller coaching clinic. But Max, you've been there. It's, it's nothing like that. We just it's it's really a place where iron sharpens iron, and we all get around each other and we talk about our craft. Because you got the quarterback camps, you got receiver camps, but this is a place where all the young sack artists that's running up the sacks and all the OGs and everybody in between, coaches and everybody can come and talk pass rush. And um, this is my seventh year doing it. Max has been huge at that. Man, what do you like about the pass rush summit? Yeah, I think you're, you're spot on with it. You know, this is my third year. Um, and honestly, the craziest part about it, you know, that you, you mentioned, like, you would think, you know, Von Miller, it's, you're, gonna, you're just going to be coaching everybody. But, you know, when I first started getting into pass rush, I, you know, I didn't start playing DN until my senior year. And, one of, you know, one of my coaches told me, he's like, Every rusher is different. Mm -hmm. You can't, and you were one of the names that were mentioned, like, you probably can't do what Von Miller can do. And certain guys can't do what I can do. And, you know, I can't do what Chandler Jones does. But if you can get one or two things from mm -hmm. those guys um, and apply it to your game, you know, you can steal an extra two, three, four sacks every year. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just being around the guys last year, like being around D. Ware, who's, yeah. you know, you know him more than me. He's an absolute legend. And, like, guys like – you know, Cam Jordan and Justin Houston, like yep. people, you know, Justin Houston has 100, what, 20, almost 120 sacks yeah, now. He's, he's, he's crazy. And he's still balling. He's got, he had another double digit sack here. So just having a guy like that in the room, talking to a lot of younger guys. And like for me last year, like me being able to, you know, pick his brain with Chandler, it was incredible. So yeah, yeah and, it, and it's just a testament, man. It, it builds that, that, that foundation that you want in the league. Uh, you know, we don't have to say exactly what game it was or whatever, but 
I remember you calling me last year before the game. You're like, yo, yeah. you're doing this and this. What, what and just, do I need to do? Just to be able to create those relationships. Just, just to be in an environment where you can talk to those guys and create those relationships, man. No, that's it's what it's huge, all man. about, bro. I remember you calling me on the plane. You're like, bro, I was thinking about you and I was rushing. I'm telling you. It's like <laughs> it worked and I was going nuts watching the whole game. It was dope, man. And that's, that's what it's really all about. It was dope, man. And, I, and I, another thing that influenced me to like create an environment like this, I was on tour in 2017 with Drake. And Drake had all, like, these young, like, upcoming, like, rappers. And he had the older guys, and he would always be around these guys. Like, he can ring it up on his own, but mm -hmm. he stay, like, in the mix and stay on the sound and stay on the wave to help improve him and everybody else around him, man. And it takes a special person to really, like, put themselves in there and create, like, these moments, man, and do that, man. And we're here at, we're here at um, the seventh – annual pass for summer we got ideas me and max we got ideas to make it even better than what it is man y'all stay tuned for that man it's gonna be super dope man but our job is to stop the quarterback um let's you you play you play pat mahomes twice a year i used to play him twice a year now i'm just playing him once a year yeah. get a fans you know an idea of how how tough it is to stop Patrick Mahomes and what it's like to play against Patrick Mahomes. Because the guy for me was Tom Brady. I always play Tom Brady each and every year. But now it's, it's, you know, the Raiders, the Chiefs, you going against Pat Mahomes. Like, how is it going against Patrick Mahomes twice a year? And what's it like rushing that guy? Yeah, honestly, uh, you know, when you watch him, you see the arm talent. You see the crazy, you know, left-hand throws when he's falling. Like, you see all that. You see the ability and, you know, the athleticism to get away from, you know, defenders. But I think the one thing that people don't talk about enough is just his competitive nature. Like, that dude is one of the most competitive people I've ever played against. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm out there, he's talking, talking shit right back at me. And I'm coming, like, doesn't – most quarterbacks aren't like that. You know, they're silent. They're not going to say much. Like, yeah. Pat's one of those guys that he's going to get right back in your face and be like, yo, like, let's go then. Let's, oh, what's up? It's crazy because we – I don't know if we, we – we got a clip of uh, – yeah, pull that up. Yeah, it, what what yeah. was that? What had happened? Like, yeah, you had hair, but Pat, y'all got into a little – what what had happened Yeah, we on were, that play? Uh, we were playing in KC, and uh, the environment was crazy. It was Monday Night Football. And, uh, you know, we were going back and forth. I got him with a sack on the first drive and ended up getting him a second time. And I'm talking like I'm, I'm naturally, you know, I'm always barking at everybody. You know, that just kind of that's just part of my nature. And uh, Pat wasn't going for it. You know, he was talking back <laughs> and he's like, all right, what's up? And so they went down and scored and I'm standing, I'm watching them in the end zone. And Pat was running with a guy or I think it was Kelsey scored and they were all running around the end zone. And I get bumped behind my back. I get hit with his shoulder. I'm like, and I turn and it was Pat and he was still <laughs> running. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm not going for that. So. I ran straight to him and I headbutted him. I'm like, what's up? So we were just jawing and, you know, everybody online obviously made a big deal yeah. of it. But ev after every single time we play, he's the first guy that comes up to me and we always show love. So I got a bunch of respect for him and, you know, it's an honor, you know, yeah, to I got, chase him down all the time. Man, I got huge respect for Patrick Mahomes. Man, it's, it's a lot of guys out there, man. It's a lot of, you know, uh, tough quarterbacks to tackle, man. Um, who was the hardest quarterback to tackle? That's tough. Um, Lamar is crazy, bro. Like, I was going to say, Lamar is Y'all played, played, played him at the beginning of the season. When yeah. I played against Lamar last year, and I had uh, two sacks in that game. I had one sack in that game. My second sack, like I had him, and he just kind of like planted down and jumped out of Slid like out of there, a yeah. sack. I had him on his shoulder, and he like kind of jumped out. I was like, bro, this is crazy, bro. But what, who's the hardest quarterback for you to, for you to get? Honestly, you know, there's a lot of – I feel like, yeah, obviously you got to put Lamar in that conversation. Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson is – when, when I played Russell, when he, was with, when he was with the Seattle Seahawks, nobody wanted to play Russell Wilson. Bro. Yeah. Like, he would run around and run around again, run around, find the open guy, and, like, and like hit him, bro. Like, Russell Wilson, Kyler Murray. Yeah, Kyler, Kyler broke yeah. out of one of my sacks. I don't know how. I had him by, like, two shoulder – literally grabbed both his shoulder pads, and he, like, squatted and slid out and mm -hmm. made a play, and I was sick. But, yeah, I think Kyler is tough, and I think Josh Allen – he was my first career college sack. Mm -hmm. It was a half sack, but I still count it. And he was at Wyoming. And that dude, like, dragged me for three yards. I'm like, okay, this dude's a monster. And then I got – I sacked him one time. Like, I think it was my second year in the league. But he's, like, tackling another DN. Like, yeah. the dude is enormous and athletic. So, yeah, he's another guy that's tough. I will say this about Josh Allen. Every time that I've played Josh Allen, I have got a sack on Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. That includes the games and practice. <laughs> that includes the games and practice. So yeah. I would have to say every time that I play against Josh Allen, 
um, you know, I get a sack. But it's it's crazy how we transition from, you know, the old quarterbacks, the old uh, the the old goats like Tom Brady and Peyton Manning to a, a newer, younger generation of like Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen and all these guys. Man, speaking of the goats, you know, Brady is now like a minority owner in the Raiders. Yeah. Um, what are the odds that he comes out and, and throws a pass out there? Do y'all see him around? Like, have you had any conversations with Brady at the facility? I have. I have. It was a couple weeks ago, um, and it was super casual and random, but I was not expecting to see Tom Brady on that day. It was like a Wednesday or something, and he walked in, and uh, he was awesome. But, yeah, the possibility, I don't, I'm honestly, you know, obviously we got Jimmy G. He's coming back. He's going to be healthy. But, um, you know, you never know what's going to happen. Tom yeah. Brady's a competitor, the greatest of all time. So, um, you know, at the absolute worst, you know, if everything doesn't go the way it's supposed to and we need him, I would not be surprised if Tom Brady <laughs> shows up in a Raider jersey. But, oh, man, Tom Brady, Tom Brady, man, I, I love Tom Brady. Like, yeah. I even contemplated, like, you know, you know, in the tattoo shop, you start thinking about, like, <laughs> tattoos to get. Like, it, a 12 popped up in my mind. A 18 popped up in my mind, too. You know, I love Peyton Manning and I love Tom Brady. But, you know, Tom Brady is just so cool, man. I remember I came to a practice. Um, I came to UCLA and I ran into Tom Brady. It was, like, in the off season. And he saw me. He was like, Vaughn. He was, like, happy. And the Gronk was right there, bro. And I was like, bro, it's, bro the only reason – that you could dislike Tom Brady is because he wins. You know what I'm saying? 100%. And because he wins without you. That's the 100%. only reason to dislike Tom Brady. Other than that, like, he gets he, – he's like a creative player on and off the football <laughs> field, man. I, 100%. I, I, I love Tom Brady all the way. It's a lot of guys saying since, you know, Tom Brady is, you know, part owner of the Raiders, they calling the, the Raiders Patriots – West now. Yeah, I got a lot of yeah. former like Patriots over there from yep. Jimmy G, Josh McDaniels, Chandler Jones, um, the GM, you know, D Dave Dave Ziegler, Jacoby Myers. Jacoby Myers. Yep. He love y'all. Yeah, he, he loved the Raiders. He, he, loves, he, loved he the was Raiders. meant to be here. He was meant to be here. <laughs> he loved the Raiders. It, he, 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 completed, he didn't complete it. He didn't complete the touchdown passes before he <laughs> 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 Jacoby, yeah. love the Raiders, man. You I got... love you, Jacoby, by the way. Don't let this get to you. We love you. Oh, man, we just having fun, man. <laughs> Bro, like, we, we just having fun, man. Danny Amendola, yep, um, Danny. he's now on the coaching staff and now yep. Brady in the ownership. Do you think these guys have brought that winning, that, that winning Patriot culture to the Raiders? Yeah, I, th I think they have. You know, it's different. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people talk about the Patriot way and how it, you know, how it is. But, you know, I think having a mixture of – you know, obviously they're bringing what they brought from Bill Belichick in New England, but the Raiders' history is is super deep. And like this last week, we had all the Raider legends, you know, freaking Charles Woodson, Ted Hendricks, all the legends come in, and they got to be with our coaches. And uh, it was just awesome to see and see everybody, you know, kind of getting on the same page because the Raiders will never change. You know, the Raiders are always going to be the Raiders, going to be the bad boys of the league, um, and that's what we're trying to bring back. But at the same time, you know, New England brings winning as well, mm -hmm. and and the Raiders have won a lot in the past. So uh, if we bring both of that you know both of those cultures together um and bringing the right guys i think you know we're gonna do a lot of great things man i got jimmy g um i'm a huge fan of jimmy g yep. Devonte Devonte adams um bro y'all loaded man i'm excited man you know there's a lot of talk about like all the raiders need is is a quarterback they can throw to Devonte. and y'all yeah. got it now y'all yep. got it now y'all got y'all loaded now um from a defensive ends point of view what makes Jimmy G a elite quarterback? I think with Jimmy, you know, ever since he's gotten the league, he's always, you know, been the guy that, you know, first off, he was the guy behind Brady. So they're like, all right, he's going to be the predecessor to Brady. And he always kind of got the short end of the stick, I feel like. And it's almost impossible. You, Tom Brady's in front of you. You know, there's, <laughs> he's won seven Super Bowls. Yeah. It's almost unfair. But, you know, what he brings is just that dog mentality. You know, ever since he's been in there, you know, he – you know, obviously all the reports come out and people are talking about, you know, injuries and things like that. I see that dude in the building every day. It's I'm in the hot tub and he's in there getting rehab and he's working and he's already on the field doing what he's doing. And like, um, I just feel like he's a winner and, and that's proven. He's won a lot more than he's lost since mm -hmm. he's been in the league, no matter where he's been. So um, I'm fired up for him. You know, I've been around him a ton and he's just a, he brings a great energy to the, to the locker room and, and the guys are already loving him. So we're just fired up to get him out there in training camp and, and fire off. Man, you know, I, I like to put my GM hat on sometimes, man. Like that, that Jimmy G pickup was perfect. Um, him, Devontae Adams, um, got uh, 
Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs, crazy running back. Offensive line has gotten better. Of course, the defense yeah. is stout. Um, y'all in perfect position, man. All y'all really got to do is beat the Chiefs gotta one beat time. The Chiefs. We got to beat them at beat least the, one. Beat, beat the Chiefs at least one time. <laughs> so one time. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be good. Yeah. It, if you beat yeah. the Chiefs at least one time, then that's the pathway in, man. And the yeah. AFC West, I played there for 10 and a half years, so. It is. It is when I was when I was there when the, the Chargers was going crazy and you know the Raiders was going crazy. They built up their offensive line and you got Patrick. But it was the toughest division yeah. in all of sports, man. So I know how tough the AFC West is, man. Um, they got talent all over, man, on each and every team. The Raiders are stacked, stacked with guys like Max Crosby. And we've done our research on Max Crosby and <laughs> we've heard that. On your iPhone lock screen, you like to put your goal reminders. In 2021, you had 100 plus emoji for 100 QB pressures and 100 M's. And then you had, and, and then in 2022, you had a picture of the deep, the defensive player of your trophy in your screen. It's 2023. We're here at the the Pass Rush Summit in Vegas. What is on your lock screen now? Can you can you show us what you what you got? What, She's What's got the, my phone right there. Well, um, we don't have to share this for the world, but you can look at it, and then we'll talk about it uh, after. <laughs> but, yeah, I look at that every single day. So that's hard. That's, that's the goal. Um, there's a lot more to it. You know, there's a lot of, yeah. a lot of deep meanings, uh, multiple meanings. But, yeah, that's my goal, man, is be the best. And, and I'm, I'm a huge believer of, of being able to see your goals, man, constantly reminded of, of your goals in life, man, and really commit everything that – that you have into winning games, man. And for um, this Raiders season coming up, what are your goals for the team this season? Number one is get in the playoffs first. You know, easiest everyone way, says Super the easiest Bowl. Way, the easiest way to get to the playoffs is to win the division. Yeah, win the division. That's obviously running through the Chiefs. So mm -hmm. um, we know what that, what that comes with. Um, they're a great team. But, yeah, we have, we have a ton of goals. I don't want to make any predictions or anything like that. But – um, I feel like if guys keep showing up the way they're showing up, we, in OTAs we had the whole entire team there. Devontae Adams is Devontae Adams. You know, yeah. He could be wherever he wants yeah. to be. That dude is there every single day. Myself, Chandler Jones, everybody's in the building trying to get this thing right. And uh, that's, that's the first step. So I feel like everybody's doing their part. Um, and we just got to keep going and, and riding that momentum. And, uh, yeah, you know, the first step is just getting in the playoffs and, yeah, then, sure. you know, go from there. We um – I know we talked a little bit about, about Tyree Wilson earlier in the show, yeah. but the Raiders took him at the number seventh pick. Yeah. And, you know, I love to put my GM hat on. <laughs> y'all got the number seventh pick. Y'all got a loaded team. Um, and y'all go and get a, a defensive end, Tyree Wilson. Yeah. And what that tells me is this guy is ready to play. This guy is the real deal. I know you haven't seen him practicing, but I know you can get a lot just by, you know, talking to a guy. How's, how's his mindset? What do, you, what do you like about Tyree so far? Yeah, you know, he's a quiet kid. Um, he's He's got all the ability in the world. The dude is, I think, 6'5", 275. He's a huge frame, a uh, great athlete, and it really comes down to putting in the work, and I, and I see him doing that. Uh, he's doing that every day. Um, you know, as a rookie, there's a lot of things going on. You know, he's got, you know, you're a top 10 pick. You got all the media stuff, all this going on, but – He's been focused, and uh, that's that's the main thing that I take away from him. You know, he's locked in. He wants to get back out on the field with us. Um, he's been awesome since he's been there. You know, the first day we got there, you know, we got a text from you know our D line coach saying, you know, the rookies are asking what y'all want. You know, in the D line room, yeah. and you know how it is. Like yeah. that's something small, but it's important. Yeah. And uh, they they showed up and stacked the whole D line room with with snacks and everything. So yeah, they're doing all the right things. And obviously, you know, Byron Young as well from Alabama, uh, Nesta. Um, Adam Plant Jr. We got a bunch of guys, you know, on the D line. Six new, you know, rookies coming in. That's hard. I got Adam Plant Jr. That's my that's my dog, man. Yeah, I seen guy, Adam. Man. I seen Adam Plant Jr. grow up since he was in junior high school, man. I didn't know he was with the Raiders. Yeah, man. he's with the that's Raiders, cool. man. His dad is a is a great dude too. Yeah, he is. So, Shout man, out to Big Plant. Big Plant. <laughs> okay. Now we're the part of the show. <laughs> well, we have got to talk about one of the best highlights of last season. Okay. The Chandler Jones fumble recovery <laughs> to Mac Jones from <laughs> then the Mac Jones stiff arm and the walk off touchdown. I s listen. I don't like swearing <laughs> on stuff, and but I tell you, like I swear, when I saw this play and I saw him throw the ball back and I saw Chandler Jones 
catch the, bro, I stood up and I screamed. I, I, I literally <laughs> stood up and I screamed and I yelled. And then he stiffed on Mac Jones and I yelled even louder. And like, bro, I, like, I, like I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. Like, I know you see it, bro. I'm getting goosebumps. No, for real. I'm getting goosebumps talking about it as a defensive end. Yeah. And then that's our boy, too. That's the boy. And then that's our boy, too. This your teammate. This your dog. That's, that's my boy. I've been knowing Chandler. I'm watching this in Buffalo, and I see them do this. Like, what was your reaction when you seen this? I honestly, I couldn't believe. I couldn't believe that actually happened. For the game. For the game. <laughs> and I knew it was the last play of the game. So I knew it was a tie ball game. I was not expecting, you know, I'm expecting them to run the ball. Yeah, yeah let's go to OT. OT. Let's go to that's, OT. That's where my mind was at. So when I seen uh, Ramondre, he like, he, he threw it back to Jacoby. And I'm like, what's going on? And so I just now literally what? ran at Jacoby and cracked him a little bit late. It's the pressure. It's the yeah, pressure on him. It's the pressure. <laughs> but I thought I was, I was kind of scared low key because that it was I like thought it would be a pass. flag. No, yeah. it's a fumble. <sighs> See, yeah. in the moment I was like, I can't, I can't be the one that messed that up. No, Cause man. it was insane. The place was so loud. It was. I'll never forget it <laughs> literally forever, man. Y'all crazy. had some crazy endings that season. Like, y'all beat yeah. Denver crazy. Y'all beat Denver in a crazy, like, ending as yeah. well. Is that the craziest ending that you've ever been a part of? 100%. Especially on that stage. Yeah. Um, at home. At home. We needed a win. It's McDaniels versus Belichick. You know he wanted to get that dub badly. And the way it happened, it couldn't have, it couldn't have been any better. Man, that's, that's amazing, bro. Like, and then it, it hit even harder because, like, that's our dog, like that, that's the boy. Bro, that's our dog, and I saw him like stiff arm, and then him run like. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Bro. I'm like, bro, I couldn't believe I it. I couldn't bro. believe it. when he stiff armed him. I'm like, he bro. looked like a running back out there. It was, it was bro. different. Shout out Chandler, bro. That's my dog, man. I love Chandler, man. It, it, it just hits even harder when it's your boy that you know that. Oh my God, look at this. <laughs> Flatten up. <laughs> oh my God. Flatten up. It just hits even harder. I've been a part of some crazy endings, man. Like you know, Tim Tebow to the Marys Thomas in the playoffs to, oh, yeah. to send it to uh, to send it over. Um, I've been in p a part of some crazy endings, man, and. You know, that was that was a crazy one, man. Shout out Chandler Jones, man, for making that happen, man. Um, uh, really, is Jacoby. Big shout out <laughs> really Jacoby. Jacoby. I love him. <laughs> hey, we love we you, Jacoby. You. We love you, Jacoby. Big fan. Hey, look, everything happens for a reason, so. 100%. You, know, you got here, and now you you never know. You know, the race going deep, you know. You never Amen. know. Amen. Amen. Also, last season, you signed a $100 million ex ex extension on the second anniversary anniversary of your, sobri your sobriety. Um, we know you, you got the you got a tatted on your hand, and is a we know is a, a very special day for you, man. Um, talk about what that meant to you, man. Like, yeah, it's honestly wild. Um, I remember the night before I got the call. You know how it is getting that your first big extension. Yeah. Um, the whole week was hectic. You know we're going back and forth with the team and my agents. And I'm on the phone 24/7, and the night before, you know I got a uh, I got the call. Like, listen, we're we're at the right spot. You know, we, we got everything where I was comfortable, they're comfortable. And uh, it was crazy, man. I was going in the next day. It's 6 a.m. workout like usual. Um, and I just posted this picture. But I already knew that deal, you know, the deal was done and it was going to be announced. Um, but it's just crazy how it works, man. That's how God works, you know, in, in mysterious ways. And I feel like everything happens for a reason. So um, it means the world, man. And now I'm over three years sober. Um, and it's been an incredible journey so far. So it's an everyday process. But, you know, things like that just shows, like, the everyday work is is paying off. And, you know, that's what it's all about. Man, you, you, weren't, highly, you weren't highly recruited out of um – um, out of high school, um, you had one offer from Eastern Michigan. You know, I came to your, your wedding, and you, like you and your wife, you've been through all type of stuff to, to get to this moment, man. Um, does this success um, mean more after, after having to prove yourself? And then what's next? What's, what does Max Crosby, you know, do next? Yeah, you know, I think, you know, everybody's got their own story. You know, I feel like I've always had the chip on my shoulder. I feel like I always had to go above and beyond to prove my worth. Um, but that's what I appreciate about it because I love when people are doubting me. I, I, I live for it, and I keep notes on everything, like even reporters. And mm -hmm. Don't even try to be petty, but like certain <laughs> reporters will say certain things. I'll screenshot it, and yeah. I got a whole vault yeah, that's, of that's the energy that you all need. the things. But that's, that's what I, I, I need and, and to get going on a daily basis. And, um, you know, it just makes it even more special because I've, I've been talking about this moment since I was at Eastern. I was 230 pounds, mm -hmm. skinny, skinny uh, DN, and – I always talked about it and I always worked for it and I constantly am putting in the work to get better and I'm doing more and more 
today, even though I got the money and I'm good and all that, but I have so much more to prove and my legacy is everything. You know, I want to win. Um, you know, going into your next question, I, that's the number one thing. I want to win a Super Bowl and I want to be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, no matter what that looks like, um, I'm going to keep working until I get that. Um, and I'm on a mission, man. I do it every single day and I'm, you know, just, you know, I'm 25 years old. I've been through a lot, um, but I appreciate all the scars that come along because that's what made me, you know, who I am today. Man, and I got kids. I got kids with an S. You got a, a beautiful daughter, man. Yep. Um, I already know the answer to this question, man. Does it mean even more after having your daughter? 1,000%, man. Uh, you know how it is. You know, you were sending me your kids, uh, you know, their baby pictures. Uh, and that, you know, when I was, when Rachel was pregnant and going, you know, we're getting ready for the baby. I'm like talking to you and talking to guys that have gone through it and talking to guys in the locker room like, I'm, I'm, I have no idea how to be a dad. I've never, you know, it's new to me, but that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Like this is, you know, you talk about the past rush summit and things like that. It really comes down to just that bond because it's more than football at the end of the day. You know, we're going to be friends for life. And, yes, uh, you know, just having, having guys like you in my corner and asking for advice from a dude like Cam Jordan and dudes that have really gone through it, um, it's, it's incredible, man. So, yeah, it means, it means the world. She's growing up. Uh, faster and faster every single day. She's pulling herself up on the couch, crawling. She's saying dada now. So <laughs> life is good, man. I can't complain. That's dope, man. Um, Max probably, Max, Max Crosby, he definitely got that bag. <laughs> you know, we, they, they, they want to ask us, what was the first thing that you bought when you got that bag? First thing I bought when I got the bag. Um, I don't, do you remember? I, I'm trying to think. Um, Honestly, I don't remember. I don't. It wasn't like one huge purchase yeah. out the gate. Um, I knew what I wanted. I wanted the Rolls Royce Wraith, the mm -hmm. silver and black Batmobile. I'm end up getting that a few months after, but um, you know, I looked out. I had some things with the family I wanted to get done, yeah. and I got that done. So mm -hmm. that was super important to me. Um, but yeah, I think the first like big purchase was uh, yeah the Wraith for sure. You know, you like you said, man. It, you know, when I think about my first big purchase, you know, you take care of the family, you do some things. I feel like, you know, the purchase that really stands out for me, um, I just went to the Camaro dealership and I just bought a Camaro. Like, yeah. this is back when I got my, my Ricky deal. Like, you know, after my your Ricky deal and you go into your second deal, like, you know, you're grown and stuff now. But yeah. when I got my first when I got my first deal, like, I just went to the Camaro. I went to the Camaro uh, dealership and I bought a Camaro with just my ID. <laughs> like I went in there and I talked to this guy, I got this guy on the phone, did that, woo -dee woo, send this here, send that there. I went there without a Camaro and just my ID and I left with a Camaro <laughs> and just my ID. I love that. So that that was like my first purchase. Of course, when you get yeah. older and you realize, you know, certain stuff don't really matter and more stuff does matter and you start having kids and sure. you know, now it now it's a whole, it's, it's totally different, but Absolutely. for me that's 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 one thing that that stands out for me. Um you're a back, you're a big tattoo guy. Big tattoo guy. And so am I. Yes. I, yes. I love tattoos, man. I actually got one big tattoo all over. My mom, when I first started getting tattoos, I got my first tattoo with my mom. Okay. And she said, I'm gonna let you get tattoos, just pro just make me one promise. She said, don't get your hands, neck, or face. Yeah. And so me, my brain instantly went to, okay, if I can't get those, then I'm gonna do everything else. <laughs> so yeah. I went in, I went in, I, I literally tell her, I, I still got the bottom of my feet to go. And like my armpits, and I just got like a little space on my back, like in certain areas. And I got my, my. It's probably this is probably too much information. But then I got yeah. my left butt cheek, and I just gotta, I just gotta get that. But other than that, like I got all, I got everything, man. Um, oh, yeah. You were a big tattoo guy, man. You even have the Raiders shield tattooed on your arm. Yeah, yeah. What do you like about tattoos, man? Like, don't they hurt? Like, ain't they painful? Like, what do they, you? Yeah, they're definitely painful. You know, it doesn't get any easier anytime you get tattoos. Um, I'll tell you, and the older you get, they probably just <laughs> get worse and worse. How <laughs> the older you know. get, the more, more they hurt. I already know, man. But yeah, I love tattoos. I literally, I, I was 17. I took my brother's ID and I went into the place and I got uh, Crosby and the date I was born on my wrist because I just wanted a tattoo. Um, and then I went from there. I got my grandmother on there, and then I just started going crazy. Um, so, yeah, I've always loved tattoos, and I definitely I got a lot of work to do, for sure. What's, what's your favorite tattoo? My favorite tattoo? Um, 
Honestly, probably my neck. Mm -hmm. I got the triangle. I got triangles everywhere, but I got triangles uh, everywhere too, man. Yeah, you got the the V. Yeah, yeah you got it on the back. <laughs> I already know. But yeah, I got you know the the triangle. It symbolizes a lot. Obviously, number one, my my sobriety. So uh, I put that everywhere. I stamp it. I got it on my face mask now. So yeah, man, it's everywhere, and I just. It's different, you know. It it was a probably the worst, most painful tattoo. The one in your um, neck. Yeah, the neck and the back of the neck, but they're my favorite. So, yeah. Um, did you get any new ones this off season? I got an appointment uh, in about a month, and I'm yeah. about to get my whole chest, torso, get top of my back. Yeah, about to go about crazy. To get blasted, man. Yeah. Uh, I got some new tattoos this off season too. I had um, when it got my my boy Demaris Thomas tattooed on my back. I got. Uh, Dirk Nowinski, my favorite basketball player. I'm from Dallas. Legend, yeah. So Dirk and the fade away, I got him fading away on my back. I got my son tatted on there and my uncle Jumba, he had passed away, I put him on there. Um, started rocking the triple V's. Um, I put that on my back as well. And you That's know, cool. I, I did that, I did all that this off season. Um, let's talk about your name though. You know, before the show I was talking, before the show I wasn't even thinking, right? Cause I had this, I had this little fun fact, um, Max with two X's. And I was asking you about kids, and I was like, man, if, if, you, have another, if you have another boy, are you going to put a third X on there? And he was like, no, 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 no. Okay. Can't have Max Triple X. But the story behind your name, Max with two X's, where did that come from? Yeah, so, you know, the story's out already, but it comes from uh, my mom. You know, I was uh, almost 12 pounds at birth, mm -hmm. so she threw another X on there and called me, you know, double X. So <laughs> I was a huge baby. They literally had to break my collarbone to get me out. I was, like, stuck. Yeah. So um, I put her through hell, but, um, yeah, you know, she got she got the two X's, and I love it because it's unique, and, you know, I feel like it fits me for sure. Man, and before we get to the fan questions right here, I got one more question for you. Um, they call you Max the Condor. <laughs> Do you remember the first time that you heard that name? Yeah, I heard it my rookie year, week four, we we're playing the Colts. And that was the first time I really got real reps in a game. You know, mm -hmm. I was getting like 15, 20 before that. I was struggling. And then I had like my breakout game and I've been starting since then. And, uh, Brian Baldinger, big shout out to Baldy. He's the man. Baldy, yep. Baldy's breakdowns. The Baldy breakdowns. I yep. love Baldy, and that's where it came from. You know, he made a breakdown on Twitter, and he was like, "Man, this guy's got super long arms. You know, <laughs> looks like a condor out there flying around, and blah blah blah." And it stuck. You know, yeah. and now all the fans and all of them call me that. So I love it. You know, I I, I got I feel like I have ten different nicknames, but I just you know I roll with all of them. For that's sure. That's all right. Shout out Baldy, man. What about for me, man? What, if I had, if you could give me a nickname, what would you give me? Goat. I mean, first ballot. No, like a nickname. Like, I mean, you know, I, Goat. I mean, that's... <laughs> I, appreciate we get, we get, I mean, as simple as that. As the, simple as that. The craziest nickname that I... I wouldn't say it's crazy, but the nickname that I have that everybody from, like, Denver Broncos team call me, they call me fam. Because when we first got a Aqib leave, TJ Ward, and, like, everybody there, like... Anybody I mean, I was like, what's up, fam? You know, we, we were like, fam, fam. And I like, you know, I was just trying. I'm a team guy. Like, yeah. so I was like, fam, fam, fam. And then Lee, he just started calling me fam. <laughs> He's like, man, we're going to go over to fam house. Like, hey, what fam at? Like, whenever you said fam, everybody just, everybody always knew it was me. So, you know, That's shout right. out to my guy, Super Bowl team, man. Shout out Lee, man. Fam, the uh, fam nickname. It, it, it kind of, you know, it kind of. It kind of evaporated now because I'm on. I've been on two other teams since yeah. then, but no, you know now it. they just call me V and I just call me Von. You know, five eight, forty, four zero. You know, I, I, I like those names. We got we got a fan question right here from James McInlay. Max, you're super swagged out always. Give us some tips on the drip. Honestly, I just try to be different. Uh, my mom, you know, I get that from my mom. You know, she always, since I was a kid, don't fit in. Mm -hmm. You know, don't be the guy that wants to fit in and follow. Like, always do you. Um, and so I express that in every way. Like, I like jewelry. I like nice clothes. Mm -hmm. I like different color cars. Different. That's just, yeah. like, my personality. So, yeah, my tips, you know, it doesn't even matter the cost. Like, you could put on something that's 30 yeah. bucks and, and make it rock, you mm -hmm. know. So, I just like being different and uh, expressing myself with tattoos, jewelry, all that stuff. I just want to show everybody who I am. Well, you're doing it, man. You, so. Max Crosby, man. There's only one. We got Luke uh, Campbell. When you were a rookie, who was the one lineman that gave you that rookie lesson about the NFL? Whoa, what? The lesson? I uh, know. I got one. You got, got a lesson? One. I got one. 
And it was my first practice, Trent Brown. He had just become the highest paid O lineman oh, of all yeah, time. He's a, he's a demon. He was 6'8, 380 at the time, <laughs> the best shape of his life. And I'd go up and, and practice, and dudes didn't want to go against him. So I'm like, I'll, I'm, I'll yeah. go, whatever. So I'm trying to prove myself. And this dude is a monster. And he was locking me up <laughs> on a daily basis. But I finally beat him with like a long arm and, and team, and I got a sack. And that took my confidence to a whole yeah. other level. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and, and me and him, you know, we're, we're so cool to this day because I was trying to kill him, you know, trying to beat him in any way, <laughs> and he was just locking me up. I'm yeah. like, this is not okay. But um, he gave me that confidence, you know, once I beat him. And, uh, you know, it's, that's, that's what the league's all about. Trent, Trent Brown is actually one of my favorite offensive linemen. Trent Brown and Trent Williams, yeah. you know, both Texas, both Texas boys, both of those guys are two of my favorite offensive linemen in the league, and they're two of the best offensive linemen in the league as well. But we have a fan question. He said, who is the best or favorite offensive lineman that you faced? Ooh, that's tough. Um, honestly, I feel like the most, like, back and forth – most like intricate battle I've had was two years ago. I got to play against Lane Johnson mm -hmm. in Vegas. Um, and we both were getting the best of each other. Um, he's obviously, a, you know, when it comes to right tackles, he's, that's, you know, the best in the league. Mm -hmm. So um, I was super, you know, looking forward to that, that opportunity. And uh, me and him had a battle um, going back and forth. And, you know, to this day, you know, we're really cool. We swapped jerseys and yeah. um, just being able to go against the best and, you know, have that back and forth battle. You know, it's like being in a boxing ring and, you mm -hmm. know, the guy across from you is a dog and it's going to be a fight. And, uh, you know, it was one of those. And, you know, we both gained a lot of respect for each other on that day. Those are the best, man. Like when you play against the best offensive linemen and you have success, because obviously you can just go to the other side and stay over there. Um, but I always like to, because I play on the left side, so I always like to go over to the right side and play, you know, the left tackle just to show, like, man, you know, I don't like to run from nobody, man. And Lane Johnson is definitely, mm -hmm. if not the best offensive lineman in the league, he's one of the best offensive linemen in the league. I got a lot of respect for Lane as well. And one more fan question for this week's Von Cast here in Las Vegas, and they say this one is for me and Max, Max and myself. What do you? What did you think when you saw Josh Allen was on the cover of the new Madden? Do I believe in the Madden curse? Um, I thought it was dope. I thought it was uh, it was well deserved. Like Josh Allen is 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 one of the most influential um, athletes in all of the world, let alone like quarterbacks in the NFL. So we're talking about Madden, the the our of our generation like this is the cover that you want to be on and we got Josh Allen on there I'm super excited I'm super happy for that guy um Josh Allen is, is one of the dopest human beings in the world like if you got a if you got a son he having a birthday party like you can have six people there and let me tell you Josh Allen is going to be one of those people he might not stay there for the whole shebang but Josh Allen is going to be there, man. Josh Allen is great, man. And for him to get on that, that cover, man, was super dope. And do we believe in the Madden curse? I think Patrick Mahomes kind of put that to rest, man. I yeah. think, I think, uh, I think I Patrick Mahomes put that to rest, man. But what do you think about Josh Allen being on the Madden cover? I, like you said, man, he deserved it. And it's, uh, it's honestly awesome. You know, he's a guy that, you know, he came in, I think, a year before me. But um, – seeing him come from Wyoming. He was a low recruited guy. Um, I got to play him twice in college and just being able to see his journey um, has been incredible. And, uh, you know, a guy like me coming from a small school, um, there's not a ton of us out there, you know, especially playing at, you know, the level we're playing at, you know, he's an all pro guy. Um, he's earned it um, and he does it on a daily basis. And you know him better than me, but every time I've been around him, he's been awesome. And he, he acts like, you, you would never know that's the, you know, one of the best quarterbacks in the world. So um, I got a ton of respect for him. He's a great player. Um, and we, we play all this year, so I'm looking forward sure. to it, man. And uh, I'm, I'm happy for Josh, man. He's earned everything he's got. And we're happy for Josh, man. We are happy for Max Crosby. Um, thank you for coming on my show, man. It's an honor and privilege to have you here, man. If you ever need me for anything, man, you already, you already know this, man. I'm a text away, man. Amen. Got to know you even more, like, coming to your wedding and get to see, get to meet your brother and your family and your beautiful wife and daughter, man. And it's always dope when, when the good guys win, man. And I'm happy for you, man. Continued success. I'm going to always be a fan. I'm going to always be, a, be your brother, man. If you ever need me, you know I got you, and that could be anything, man. All love and respect, man. I appreciate you. Max Crosby. Uh, appreciate you, Appreciate brother. you, my guy. Always, bro. <laughs> yes, sir.